What do you think of Duke's performance against UNC? I thought they were emotionally exhausted by the second half. I thought that everyone joked about, you know, oh, are you emotional? Are you emotional? Well, it was an emotional day. It was an emotional week. Uh, it was an event. It was something bigger than a basketball game. It was Coach K's last game at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Those guys, whether they were loose the day before in practice or weren't loose the day before in practice, uh, you know, in the end, they saw those 90 players. Uh, they saw the circus that surrounded the game that was different than any game, even at Duke. Uh, and they got caught up in it. Uh, I thought that, look, I knew the first four minutes was going to be a mess for Duke. There, there was no doubt about it. I mean, you know, everything that was transpiring, it was so different. It was so out of routine. Coach K coming out early, taking the picture with the former players, uh, everything that w went on around the game before the game. You know, so you knew that they were going to come out that, you know, you know, when Jay said it was bigger than them, yeah, yeah, that event was bigger than them. There's no doubt about it. Now, when the game started, I thought they settled in. Uh, but I thought the second half, they were emotionally spent. And on the other hand, I thought that North Carolina, quite honestly, uh, had a absolutely perfect game plan uh, to attack the way Duke plays. Uh, what, what, Jay, what you said about leadership, you, you would want it from Wendell Moore. Let's face it. I mean, that's who you'd want it from. I don't disagree with you in terms of that. I don't think they have a guy that's just going to grab everyone like, you know, like you would have done in in a, in a huddle or a timeout where you would have you know, grabbed a guy and looked someone in the eye and say, hey, let's go. But I don't even think they had that in them. Here's my bigger problem with how how, how Duke played, and it's real simple. That 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 spread ball screen that they set in the second half of R.J. Davis, they didn't figure it out the whole game. Like, if you continue to do the same thing, Carolina was going to continue to score. And that's just the way it was. And then offensively, when the game got tight, and I've been saying this all season long, they don't know who to go to. So they all took bad shots. So I thought it was a great event. Um, you know, it was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was bigger than a basketball game. But, uh, you know, I think they were emotionally exhausted. But I do agree with you. They lack an on-court leader, and they definitely lack. And this is when you have so many good players, all right, at the end of the game, you, sometimes you don't know who to go to. Like, your team knew who to go to. They were going to go to Jay Williams. When I coach against J.J. Reddick, they were going to go to J.J. Reddick. All right? The championship teams have a guy they're going to play through at the end of the game. I don't care if it's the NBA, college, or high school. That team doesn't know who they're going to play through. Like, if it's Palo and then you know what, dude, where do you want to catch the ball? You want to catch the ball on the left block? Then get it on the left block. We'll get it to you there. So I, I think that's kind of what happened at the end. But I thought it was an incredible day, but uh, not the fairy tale I think everyone wanted. Yeah, Seth, you know, regardless of whether you are an advocate of the handshake line or not, if you're opposed to it, wh what are your thoughts on what happened at the end of the game where Chris Carrawell did not shake the hand of Hubert Davis, the head coach of North Carolina? Chris Carrawell being assistant coach of Duke, by the way. Yeah, I thought it was disrespectful. You respect the game, you respect your opponent. And, you know, again, I don't know what happened before the game. I don't know what happened. You know, whether, whether they honored K uh, before you were North Carolina's game, that's their prerogative. All right, I, you know, I'm sure they did something in in a private setting, but I don't I don't, I don't know. So I, I'm not on the form. But here's the deal: win or lose, you take the high road. You catch more bees with honey. You know, these guys got to understand, and I, I'm not going to mention it, but I sent the text message to someone that I care about dearly. I said this to him. I said, the camera's always on you. The camera's always on you. And you know what? Your social media is your resume. And if the camera's always on your social media, you know what? It, it, it's so much smarter to take the, the high road. It, you know, is it symbolic or something? Yeah, look a guy in the eye and say, good game. I'll tell Coach K did. It was a, it was a blow by. No so J. Will, no shoulder pat. But, uh, but yeah, you, you respect him. You also, you know, whether you like it or not, You've got those players behind you, all right? And they're going to mirror your image. I say, I'm going to say the same thing I said, you know, after the Juwan Howard thing. It's your responsibility as a leader to set the standard. And the standard is a standard. You know what? You respect your opponent. Win or lose, you respect your opponent. Because sure as hell, if they won that game, they were going to be shaking hands. Mm. Seth, how do you feel about Duke heading into the tournament? Uh, for, for the reasons I said, key, key, here's my thing. Duke, Duke is to, to win the national championship to get, they could get knocked out in the second round. And, and here's my reason. Uh, you're going to play close games in the NCAA tournament. That's just the way it is. 
Uh, and you know, we had the conversation on game day about, you know, whether no, number one seed or number two seed. Well, if you're not number one seed now, they're going to go on the road. They're not going to get set to Chicago or, or, or be local. And if you're going to go on the road, the second round, you're going to play a pretty good team. And that pretty good team, if it's a close game or, or, or in your third game, it's a close game. Who are you going to? Like, Jay, Will, you, you, I know you follow your team now. I know, and I know you love your team. All right. In terms of you want to see another banner hung. I mean, you want to see another banner hang next to your banner. Who, like, I think they got to go to Ben Carroll. Well, here, uh, here, do you have any idea where Ben Carroll wants to catch the ball? Do you think he, do you think he wants the ball? Well, here's the problem I have with this. Like, do you think he wants the ball? He, they play. It's a lot of ISO ball. And, like, the lack of movement, I think, is something that really hurts this team, right? Like, they can't play basketball the way that we played when we had Shane Battier, Mike Denley, Carlos Boozer. We had guys that could spread the core, guys who had high basketball IQs, and guys that had experience. This team lacks experience. So, a lot of times, I just saw the ball handed to Paolo, and it was like, hey, go do your thing. And the, the thing that Duke lacks is dynamic guard play. Like, dynamic guard play wins you championships. Look at Baylor last year. Look at Gonzaga and Jalen Suggs. College I got them there, right? Yeah. So, if is that Jeremy Roach coming off the bench? Trevor Kills doesn't seem to be doing that no, at a high Trevor level. Keels. Trevor Kills is the most dynamic guard they have because he's so powerful and so strong. Like, the end of the games, and I charted it because you know me, I have no life. At the end of the games, the ball ends up in Trevor Kills' hands. He ta- he's taken every game they've lost down the stretch. He's taken a good majority of the shots, whether the ball ends up with him on a short clock or he wants it. Now, like, it can't be A.J. Griffin because A.J. Griffin got shut down by, by Leaky Black. He couldn't, he couldn't get himself freed up, and he's a, not good enough off the bounce to create separation himself. But, but here's my thing on the thing. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think you need a dynamic guard. But, I mean, the same thing happened in, in, in Zion's last game against Michigan State. They didn't get in the ball where he needed to get the ball. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, Subscribe to ESPN+.